let me uh, start with what I understand by uh, universe of echoes and um, why I think that there could be a problem um, with our understanding of freedom. And in order to um, problematize our understanding uh, of freedom in a universe of echoes, I would like to present you two uh, thought experiments which I take out of uh, the philosophical literature uh, and which were developed uh, in a different context. And I try to transfer them uh, to the universe of echoes and the question whether uh, we have uh, free choice in such a universe uh, uh, or not. And uh, the result will be ambivalent, not really yes or no. And therefore, in my last part of my lecture, I would uh, like to take a different view on the universe of echoes and uh, to uh, uh, find a, a conclusive answer uh, to, the, to the question. So let me start with um, uh, what I understand by a universe uh, of echoes. Um, the way I would like to present it here is perhaps uh, science fiction, or still science fiction. Science fiction. It could turn out one day that it's not science fiction anymore. And uh, um, I think you all made the experience uh, uh, while you are on the internet that your data are um, collected and uh, that private or governmental organizations use your data uh, to produce a personal uh, profile um, to observe your activities in the internet, <coughs> um, perhaps also to survey you, um, and most importantly, to predict your future behavior uh, in the uh, internet, uh, and to mirror um, and uh, continuously confirm your preferences, your choices, your activities, thoughts, emotions, as they become manifest uh, with uh, uh, your, the way you are using uh, uh, the, the internet. And this is, of course, uh, uh, very uh, effective and uh, very interesting, uh, for example, for private organizations, for companies uh, who design uh, your internet environment um, in such a way that it mirrors your wishes and preferences, and so they are offering your products uh, according to the profile they have uh, constructed uh, uh, of you. And uh, of course, uh, they hope that you say, ah, well, ah, that's what I always wanted, and that's a good idea, and so you buy it, and so the, the company earns uh, much money. But of course, it could, can also be used for uh, political uh, purposes or for governmental uh, purposes in order to design your uh, internet universe in a way that you behave in a certain way uh, and uh, 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 to avoid uh, divine behavior or something like that. Um, so that's uh, the, the one kind of a universe of echoes. The other kind uh, uh, I would like also to consider as a universe of uh, echoes uh, are the social mm -hmm. networks like Facebook and Twitter and, and others. Um, because um, many people um, use these networks um, in order to look for other people um, who share their worldview or share their preferences and interests and who always confirm each other in having these interests and, and preferences. Um, and uh, you all know the, the, the likes you can uh, uh, put on certain presentations of persons in the internet. And liking is, of course, uh, uh, a reaction which you uh, like most because it confirms you in the way you are presenting you in the internet. And uh, confirms yourself, and uh, you get admiration and recognition and uh, all that. And then there are, of course, uh, some, some groups or closed groups um, which are constituted by a shared view on certain issues, um, on political issues, for example, on migration, or uh, other things uh, or common interests, and uh, these groups uh, mostly also work in such a way uh, that they that the members um, share the same ideas or the the same opinion, opinions on certain issues, and always confirm each other that they are right in having these opinions, 
and all the others uh, uh, who have different views, uh, they are bad people and, uh, and so on and so on, always uh, draws the limit between them and us and we share uh, certain views and they have uh, the bad views. Um, <clears throat> so they encourage each other to maintain and to defend their view. Now what could be the, the, the consequences? I mean, um, one consequence of course is uh, that uh, it always happens that these people are confronted with information or with views uh, which are different, uh, which do not coincide uh, with what, what they are uh, thinking. And a universe of echoes uh, allows these people um, uh, to cope with dissent and uh, uh, dissonance uh, by uh, confirming each other that they are that they have the right view that they can ignore uh, dissonance and, uh, and difference or contestation uh, um, by uh, having such a universe. You can say, well, outside they are these people. They have the bad beliefs. They have the wrong view. Uh, we have the right view, and we share this view, and we always uh, confirm each other that our view uh, is right. So. That's perhaps one of the reasons why conspiracy theories um, are often found in some of these groups uh, uh, where you uh, ignore certain facts or certain objections uh, to the way you see the world or uh, the, uh, your opinion uh, which you have on certain political issues. Uh, and of course, this is uh, uh, added to this is uh, the, the idea that some bad people manipulate or manage everything so that uh, 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 some people have uh, the wrong view, but we know better, we have the insight in the real uh, 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 world, and uh, uh, we know that there are some bad guys uh, manu manipulating uh, everything, and you can always reconfirm this view uh, uh, in such a uh, universe uh, of echoes. Um, so that's so my, my, my view on the universe of echoes, one could say, is perhaps a, a little bit radical and different from what we have here and now. So that's why I said perhaps it's still science fiction. So for, for my argument, I presuppose that these universes of echoes are closed. Uh, that there is no, that perhaps we, we live in different universes of echoes, but they are closed. So we, we try to avoid any crash uh, uh, with uh, reality. Um, and if one uh, takes it, it, it in such a way, one could say, uh, could ask, uh, what are the consequences uh, of these universes of echoes to our freedom? So the central question I would like to deal with is, um, when we make choices in the universe of echoes, can we still say that uh, uh, these choices are free uh, choices uh, or not? Um, so just to remind you on a similar uh, experiment showed in a film, perhaps some of you know the film The Truman Show, uh, where someone uh, uh, grows up in, in an artificial world which is constructed around him. Uh, and uh, uh, this world, uh, or this universe, is made uh, by a huge television company uh, uh, in order to have a, a show uh, where everybody could look at this poor guy. He himself, who does not know that he is living in such a universe, thinks he is a very lucky guy uh, because everything is fine in this world. Uh, he is the only one who does not know that, that this is uh, uh, a designed uh, world uh, for him. And of course, the, the economic uh, reason for having this show is that um, all the other members uh, uh, who participate uh, uh, surrounding him in this uh, universe, they always, in, in, in certain phases, have to, have to show products. It's, uh, oh, we, these are wonderful conflicts and so on. So, and all the, 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 the people who sh uh, view these, uh, this show on TV, uh, they sh uh, are encouraged to buy these, uh, these products while uh, seeing the show. And in the end of the film, I mean, he he uh, finds a way out <laughs> of this uh, universe and has really, uh, really traumatic experience uh, while realizing that he grew up in such a designed uh, world. So that's perhaps a certain similarity. Universes of echoes are designed worlds 
uh, in which we live, and uh, uh, one could also uh, ask whether this poor guy, when he made a choice in this universe, uh, whether this was a free choice uh, uh, or, uh, uh, or not. So now my two thought uh, experiments. Um, the first one I take from Harry Frankfurt, um, uh, from an article uh, uh, called Alternate Possibilities and uh, Responsibility, published in 1968. Um, and Harry Frankfurt in this article tries um, uh, to argue against uh, uh, the, uh, the idea that there is a close relationship between um, having alternate possibilities um, when I make a decision and, uh, and moral responsibility. That having alternative poss possibility is a, is a necessary condition uh, for uh, 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 being morally responsible for the choice which I, which I make. And, um, uh, one thought experiment against uh, this idea uh, is, um, so I just read it so that you um, can understand the experiment. Suppose someone, Black, uh, wants another one, Jones, to perform a certain action. Um, Black is prepared uh, to go to considerable length to get his way, uh, but he prefers to avoid showing his hand unnecessarily. So Black tries to influence uh, uh, Jones, Jones uh, to, to do what Black wants to do, but um, uh, he doesn't like to intervene too much. Uh, so he waits until Jones is about to make up his mind what to do. Uh, and he does nothing unless it is clear to Black uh, that Jones is going to decide to do something other than he, Black, wants him to do. If it does become clear that Jones is going to decide to do something else, Black takes effective steps to ensure that Jones decides to do, and uh, that he does so what he wants him to do. Whatever Jones' initial preferences and inclinations, then Black will have his way. Uh, so uh, Black lets uh, Jones decide and do what Jones wants to do, unless Jones decides and wants to do something Black doesn't want to do. And of course, for this thought experiment, the interesting question is, um, uh, uh, it's obvious that um, Jones has no alternate possibilities. Um, either he does what he wants to do, and if he wants to do something else, Black will intervene. and restricting from, from doing uh, uh, what he does. The interesting question, of course, is uh, when, uh, when, uh, when Jones does what he wants to do and Black is only looking whether this coincides with uh, Black's own intentions so that Black does not intervene, uh, it's clear that Jones has no alternate possibilities, uh, but the question is uh, when uh, Black does not intervene, whether Jones' decision was free, or whether um, uh, Jones uh, can be made morally responsible for the choice uh, he made. Um, and of course, uh, uh, so that's from the, the film The Truman Show. Um, that, that's the one who designed the universe, and one could imagine this is like Black, um, looking into Jones, uh, looking whether Jones uh, decides according to the preferences or intentions of uh, Black uh, or not. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, or the, the, the outcome is, suppose that Black never had to show his hand because Jones, for reasons of his own, decides to perform and does perform the very action Black wants him to perform. And uh, Harry Frankfurt's conclusion is that Jones will be a pre, uh, precisely the same moral responsibility for what he does as he would have uh, borne if Black had not been ready to take steps to ensure that he do it. Um, so um, uh, Jones does not intervene because accidentally uh, uh, Black does not intervene because accidentally Jones' intentions coincide with, Black inten with Black's intentions, so Black does not intervene. Uh, and Harry Frankfurt's uh, conclusion is, although 
uh, Jones had no possibility to do otherwise. Um, uh, uh, his choice still was free, and uh, he bears a uh, uh, moral uh, responsibility. Um, and the, the reason is that Jones decides and performs, uh, as Harry Frankfurt says, for reasons of his own. His own means of, for reasons of, for the own reasons of Jones. Um, and if he does it of his own, he did it because that was what he, Jones, really wanted to do. And then he is, uh, uh, his moral responsibility for doing it is not affected by the fact, fact that Black was lurking in the background with sinister intent, since this intent never comes into play. Um, and so he was free to decide and to do what he, Jones, wanted. Also, Black was in the background and looking for the uh, uh, he does uh, whether Jones' intentions uh, coincide or correspond to um, uh, Black's uh, intentions. Um, so if we try to transfer this thought experiment to the universe of echoes, uh, one could perhaps say, um, so when I'm in a universe of echoes, um, and uh, also this is a designed world, um, so it's not so much that someone is looking into me and uh, like uh, like black, um, but uh, it's it's around me, the world in which I move and think and make my decisions um, is designed by someone else. Uh, one could nevertheless say, when I decide and do what I want to do, um, I'm free to decide and to do it, and so I'm morally responsible, even if the world in which uh, I decide. Uh, is designed by someone else. Um, and in a way that predicts and mirrors my wishes, preferences, emotions, uh, and so on. So the fact that I'm in a designed universe, um, uh, uh, according to this uh, thought experiment, one, one could draw the conclusion that this does not really affect uh, my, my freedom of choice, and in addition, consequently, not my uh, moral uh, more responsibility, because um, uh, 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 until I make my choice in a universe of echoes as my choice, uh, that, that it's my uh, will, uh, then um, uh, it's still uh, uh, free. And in addition, so that, that's now a difference between the universe of echoes and, and Harry Frankfurt's uh, thought experiments. In addition, one could say that uh, the universe of echoes is uh, also designed according to my own preferences and predictions uh, about my future uh, wishes, uh, um, uh, and it mirrors myself. So that it's even more of myself in the universe of echoes than in Harry uh, uh, Frankfurt's uh, uh, thought experiments. And one could even uh, uh, Christoph uh, Ulyard <laughs> this morning told me, I could even uh, think about a universe of echoes which reveals my true preferences, which I did not know until now, but by the, all the information I get in this designed uh, universe, I realize, ah, I know this, uh, this is my true self, my true uh, uh, preferences. Uh, and when I make a decision uh, in, in such a universe, it could be that it's uh, uh, even more, my own decision, my view, uh, according to which I, um, I uh, uh, make the choice. Of course, the open question is, um, what or who is the self that wants uh, something in such a universe of uh, echoes? So how is the self um, uh, uh, which uh, uh, produces intentions uh, that I consider as my intentions, my own uh, 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 a decision, uh, how is this uh, constituted and, and de uh, developed? And um, uh, Harry Frankfurt gives another answer on that in another article on freedom of the will, where he has this idea of, of uh, wishes which uh, could uh, refer to my own wishes, so I can have the wish to have a certain wish. And if I have such a reflexive uh, stage, uh, I, I, uh, my will is free. But uh, that's another uh, issue. Um, so that's the first thought experiment. Uh, now I would turn, like to turn to a second thought experiment, uh, which uh, um, is not, it was not invented by Philip Pettit, uh, the, the political philosopher, 
um, but but he makes uh, uh, makes uh, uh, much use of it, and that's the the thought experiment of the benevolent master and and his slave. So imagine uh, a slave uh, and a benevolent master. Uh, for example, in, in ancient Rome, uh, some Greek philosophers uh, from Athens, they were slaves for their masters in Rome, and these masters treated these philosophers uh, <coughs> slaves uh, quite nice. Uh, uh, they were slaves because their master liked to talk to them and uh, to have a certain philosophical implications, but nevertheless, they were slaves. So they were no equal human beings, but they were treated like property and could be sold Board and, uh, and had no rights. Um, uh, so in Philip Pettit's uh, example, so the, the master lets his slave decide and do what he wants, unless the slave does something what the master does not want. Then the master intervenes and prohibits the slave from doing uh, 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 what the slave uh, wants. So a similar uh, uh, situation as in Harry Frankfurt's uh, thought experiment, and uh, um, although um, uh, Philip Pettit draws completely different conclusions than Harry Frankfurt, I never saw in Philip Pettit's, uh, one of Philip Pettit's book, uh, uh, a reference to Harry Frankfurt. Uh, um, uh, but uh, um, uh, Philip Pettit then again uh, asked the question whether uh, the, the slave uh, has freedom, or freedom of choice, when he decides and uh, uh, does what he wants uh, without intervention of the master. So the master is there, but the master is in the background. Uh, and uh, when the slave does what he wants and the master agrees, the question is, is this a situation where the slave was free to do what he wanted? Or is the fact that there is the master in the background um, looking whether the slaves does what the master likes or wants uh, or not, um, is that a fact which has to be taken into account and which affects uh, perhaps uh, the freedom uh, of the slave uh, in such a situation. So and Philip Pettit's answer is no, uh, the slave is not free. Um, uh, um, uh, because uh, as long as the master can restrict the slave's choice arbitrarily, uh, and even if he does not actually in, in a certain situation, uh, the slave is dominated uh, by his master because there is this master-slave relationship uh, which allows the master to intervene arbitrarily uh, every time he, he uh, wants to do. Um, and according to Philip Pettit, uh, freedom requires uh, uh, what he calls non-domination, so that there is not such a social relationship that uh, there is a master uh, uh, who could intervene uh, arbitrarily. Um, uh, and Philip Pettit adds that the fact uh, that the master could interfere into the choice of uh, uh, the slave um, is not as such uh, a restriction of freedom of choice, um, as long as it is not done arbitrarily. Um, and this, mean, uh, this means uh, a restriction of a freedom of choice as such um, is, is not an interference into uh, my freedom um, as long as I have control about uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the master's in, uh, interference. Um, so according to Pettit, uh, freedom requires independency of the will of others and even the paternalistic goodwill uh, uh, of uh, others. Um, uh, so, um, uh, and, and this is directed against a liberal conception of, uh, of uh, freedom, which uh, defines freedom as the absence of interference. As long as nobody interferes into my uh, freedom of choice, I am free. And, uh, uh, but uh, this liberal conception of, of freedom uh, would be compatible uh, with the master-slave situation. Um, because uh, according to the liberal conception of freedom, uh, the slave is free as long as the master does not intervene. Um, and uh, Pettit tries to demonstrate that this is an insufficient concept of, of freedom because it ignores uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the domination 
uh, relationship between the master and the slave. So restrictions of freedom could be compatible uh, with freedom um, as long as the restrictions um, are the result of a, a, a coordination of, a, of, a, of an agreement uh, between uh, the master and the, and the slave. When, when they, and this would of course presuppose that the master-slave relation is changed into a, a relation among equals uh, uh, as long as they uh, agree on uh, uh, common restrictions of freedom. These restrictions of freedom um, are uh, uh, not a kind of domination, so they are compatible with uh, freedom. So that's the, the context in which uh, Philip Pettit um, uh, develops this uh, thought experiment, and now I try again to transfer it uh, to the universe uh, of echoes. Um, so I could say uh, the universe of echoes um, is designed according to my wishes. It is an echo of myself. Uh, and this sounds as if it would be a kind of non-domination. Um, but the problem is that I'm not the master of my echo. And it, because the universe of echoes is designed by someone else, although it mirrors my own wishes and preferences. Um, but the problem is that I have no control about the designers of my universe and uh, about the rules according to which they design my universe. The algorithms and everything uh, uh, which uh, I don't know, which they apply uh, uh, to, my, uh, to, to the way I move in, in, the, in the internet and, and according to which they, they design uh, the universe uh, uh, in which I then make my decisions. So the so it it, it is um, something like a, 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 a contradictory uh, outcome if one tries to apply this thought experiment to the universe of echoes because one uh, one could say on the one hand the universe is my own extended and predicted self it mirrors myself um, but at the same time the self uh, which is the mirror uh, in which I see my preferences and decide according to my preferences was not, not designed by myself but by others and their will, how they um, uh, uh, constructed the algorithms and other techniques in order to find out what are my real wishes and uh, present them as my wishes uh, according to which then I make my uh, uh, decisions. Um, so uh, the self, uh, 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 which is the mirror in the universe of echoes, is not uh, it, it is the self designed by others, although they present it as my own self. So this would um, uh, uh, allow the conclusion to say, well, this is a, could be a kind of domination, um, although I'm dominated by my own self, but because my self was made up by others. It's not yeah, really myself, because the way it is presented to me is out of my own uh, 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 control. Um, so in the conclusion, one, I, I think it's difficult. If one takes um, uh, Harry Frankfurt's thought experiments, uh, one could say, well, there is no problem in the universe of echoes, as long as I can say, this is my decision. It's what I want to do. It's a uh, free choice. And uh, if one takes Philip Pettit's uh, thought experiment, uh, what they, well, it's, it's ambivalent. One could say, in the one direction, nah, I'm free in the universe of echoes because it mirrors everything I want and what I think I am. But on the other hand, the way in which it is presented uh, and made up uh, uh, is dominated by, by others. So this would. Uh, allow the conclusion that I'm not free in a, in a universe uh, of echoes. So in the last part uh, of my talk, I would therefore uh, try to uh, take another uh, uh, way to find uh, an answer uh, about uh, freedom in a universe of echoes. And the problem I, I think is, uh, has to be taken into account is a relationship between the freedom freedom and the status quo. Um, 
of course, we know um, at, at, we know from from daily life that we are not always masters of our universe, um, uh, and uh, that we often uh, uh, are looking for confirmations uh, of my of the views and preferences and wishes uh, we have here and now today, uh, and that we try to avoid cognitive dissonances, uh, uh, contradictory. Um, uh, information or experiences which we then try to narrow by a certain narrative uh, to present in a way that it is compatible with our own preference. So that, that's our day-to-day -day situation and we nobody would deny that nevertheless we are more or less free when we make uh, a certain choice unless we don't, we are not forced or uh, 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 under, under a strong repression and so on. Uh, but I think what is important is um, uh, uh, an experience we always have in, in the offline world um, is that uh, while we are forming our preferences and wishes, we are often confronted with difference, dissonance, dissent, conflict, and struggles uh, 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 with uh, others. Um, for example, uh, about the rules of cooperation in a shared universe. So, that, that we try to cooperate and uh, to agree on certain rules we uh, think uh, to be valid for us. Uh, oh, we often have dissent and contestation and conflict, so we have to, um, uh, 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 to enter um, a certain relationship with others, with different experiences, and we have to cope with that uh, in order to form our, our, uh, our preferences. Um, and that's uh, uh, a different view on the self if one takes this uh, uh, um, aspect seriously. Uh, uh, and so one could say uh, the, the status quo of my views, preferences, wishes, and of myself as, a, as such, uh, they are outcome of a process. Um, and uh, they are always in a process, uh, not something substantial with this, which is uh, given at one time and uh, it never changes, but it is always in the process. We are always changing our preferences. Some uh, 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 more often, others only when we are in an existential crisis or something like that, when we are really uh, have to think about what I really want to do, what I really, how I really want to live my life. Um, but it's always in a it's a dynamic uh, and not a static um, uh, process. And uh, only when I have made this, these experiences of dissent and, uh, uh, and conflict, um, I also learn to distance myself uh, from my own preferences and, and, and the views which I have. I, uh, from this distance, I can uh, criticize my own preferences and wishes. Uh, and, and then change them or, or reaffirm them. But this reaffirmation is, is, a, is a done from a different stage, uh, as if I uh, simply have a certain view and I, I keep on uh, defending this view and never think about that. Um, this is a certain kind of reflexivity uh, which we um, can uh, take uh, to our own views and wishes and, uh, uh, and, 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 and preferences, but we can get this reflexivity only uh, uh, by social experience, by having conflicts and uh, different uh, um, uh, uh, views from, from different people which, with which we have to confront us, which we have to face. Um, so one could say, well, freedom and, and, and the self uh, uh, is a dynamic uh, concept uh, and can find in, in the philosophy, in history of philosophy a, a lot of examples so one could take perhaps two Hegel and, and George Herbert Mead um, uh, uh, who uh, try to defend the view that in order to be really become free you have to go into the world and uh, 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 have encounters with others and uh, the experience of difference and dissent uh, uh, and even of failure and then you learn to overcome your, your, your uh, thoughts and uh, this is what really 
makes a self possible, which is autonomous uh, and, and free. So for Hegel, uh, the eye has to face uh, directions. So I'm not sure whether that's the correct uh, translation, Entzweiung uh, and externalization. So it has to, the Entäußerung, it has to uh, realize him or herself in the external world. And of course, this is a conflictual process. Uh, um, uh, with dissent and contestation, and then come back to oneself and with all of these experiences uh, in the background, and then I, I have a true self and I'm, I'm free. For George Herbert Mead, it's the development of uh, the I which encounters the other, and by uh, uh, having the experience that uh, uh, I can see myself from the point of view of the other, and can by this have a different view on myself uh, than I had before, uh, <clears throat> I could become a me, which has a, this reflexive uh, relationship uh, to his or her own uh, wishes, intentions, and uh, uh, preferences. So if one takes such a dynamic view um, of freedom and the self, uh, one could perhaps say um, that the universe of echoes mirrors a static view of the self. Uh, because differences, dissent, and conflict are only opportunities to confirm the static uh, view. Uh, and if there is any freedom in a universe of echoes, it is such a static uh, freedom. Uh, or to uh, uh, say it more in, a, in a more radical version, uh, it means I am kept in the prison of my status quo preferences. Um, so that's, that's my freedom. Uh, um, and one could say, well, this is a, perhaps a kind of narcissism. So I'm always mirroring myself and uh, confirming myself like uh, Narcissus uh, uh, mirrored uh, uh, himself in, in, in the water and was happy to see himself uh, in, in, in the water. But this is static as it is here and now, and it continues to be uh, static. Uh, whereas a, a dynamic view of freedom uh, means, uh, of course, uh, also insecurity, risk, challenges, failure, the, the risk of to, to, to failures, of making mistakes, uh, but of course uh, entails also the opportunity of, uh, of learning uh, processes. And uh, so that's my last remark, perhaps because um, uh, a dynamic view of freedom uh, means risk and, and danger, um, many people fear uh, a fear of freedom. So that's uh, the famous title of a book by Erich Fromm in 1941. Uh, uh, the, the English version, the title is Escape from Freedom. In German, uh, Germany it was translated into Furcht vor der Freiheit, uh, which means fear uh, of freedom. So when, when a dynamic view of freedom means I have to take risks, then I try to avoid uh, uh, that. And uh, yeah, Eric Fromm wrote his book in 1941. Uh, so he tried to uh, explain uh, fascism. And uh, so he tried to uh, demonstrate that uh, escaping from freedom often leads to um, authoritarianism. So I'm inclined to join uh, groups which uh, submit themselves to a Brand idea and, and uh, uh, behave in an authoritarian way, so they, 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 they accept all the orders which are made in order to realize this brand uh, uh, idea. Uh, destructiveness, uh, so we <coughs> try to destroy all the enemies around us which do not share uh, our, our uh, uh, views. They are bad people, they have to be eliminated. Um, we, we don't take the risk um, to to enter into uh, a, a conflict with them, to, <clears throat> to have a discourse about different views, uh, um, uh, but we simply try to get rid of uh, them because uh, their difference is uh, 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 dangerous our own, uh, uh, our own group. And, and of course, uh, also conformity is also an easy escape from uh, from uh, freedom by simply joining a group uh, which uh, accepts certain rules and all live according to these rules. Uh, one has to behave in a conf 
conformist way, so this is uh, uh, an easier life than taking the risk of, um, of uh, freedom. So then the final answer would be there is no freedom in the universe of echoes, or there is only a static uh, um, uh, kind of freedom in the universe of echoes, but not a dynamic uh, kind of freedom. Thank you for your attention.